Well, I don't know if Eric Bieniemy is going to remember this, but on October 2nd, Georgia was in town. It was the uh, reunion of the 1990 National Championship team, and we wrapped up. I said, Coach, I can't wait to see you back here in Boulder. <laughs> and here you are. Congratulations, man. Thank you. It feels good to be back. Yeah. It feels very good to be back. When you when you go back to even that conversation that day, th there were rumors out there there might be a change. At that point, did you even allow yourself to think about coming back and being part of this once again? You know what? I enjoyed the moment of being back for the National Championship reunion. No, I was not thinking about what lies in the future because you have to understand, I, I have a job. I, you know, I was committed. I still am committed to that job. And, and the thing about it, when you're in this industry, you never really want to see a coaching staff hmm. have to go through the negative things that they go through. And you got to understand that we're all like a fraternity. You know, change is hard. Change is difficult. And so throughout that time, I never thought about it. The only thing I focused on was <laughs> trying to help the Minnesota Vikings go to the Super Bowl. And we screwed that up a little earlier. <laughs> now, let's just for clarification's sake, with your job with the Vikings right now, yes. where, where does that stand? How much more do you have to do with them? I know Coach Embry is coming straight here now from the yes. Redskins, but how about you? Well, when I talked to Coach Embo, okay, I told him, hey, I'm all in. But – Here's what you have to understand. I've made a commitment to this organization, okay? The Will family has treated me great. They have taken great care of me and my family. Uh, Les Frazier, who's our new head coach, he's a tremendous coach, and we want to do everything under the sun to help him to get the job. And on top of that, you know, I don't want to bail on my team hmm. right now. I want to make sure that we finish this process the right way. And that was my whole objective. Now. Am I going to miss out on some recruiting? I am, but I'm going to pay close attention from afar. And when the season's over, I'm going to hit the ground running. Any chance you can bring Adrian Peterson with you here to Colorado to play? I'm going to try. I, I am going to try <laughs> and, and do whatever I can to get him in the fold. <laughs> Coach, you have been here when this uh, program reaches pinnacle, winning a national championship. You know Rashawn Salam wins the Heisman Trophy. How high this program has been. Why do you think this program could reach those heights once again? Well, the program has had a great deal of success in the past, and I think that has been, been forgotten. But uh, the thing is, I think that's why, and not so much I think, I, that's why the program has hired Coach John Ember because he's seen it from the bottom and work its well, way up to the top. And understand this, we just got to make sure that we are identifying the people that's going to fit what we want. And, yes, is it going to be a difficult process at times? Yes, it is. But you're going to have a committed coaching staff that's going to go out there and recruit the right type of players, recruit the right type of kids that's going to take a tremendous amount of pride in earning a degree and being the best athlete that they can possibly be. But, yes, we can accomplish those goals. But the bottom line, you're going to have a committed focused staff that's energetic and excited about getting this thing going. I don't know if you can see. I'm getting a little pumped up right now <laughs> talking about it. Going to hit somebody. <laughs> CJ's around here. Make sure you hit him, not me, all right? <laughs> hey, uh, when I talked to Coach Embry, I asked him about the idea that here he's hired as a head coach, does not have, have head coaching experience. Mm -hmm. You were the coordinator. You have mm -hmm. not been a coordinator. What does that mean, if anything? Okay, and just like I exp uh, explained to some others, okay, Early in my coach career, I had an opportunity to work with a Sean Watson, okay? Sean Watson did a great job here, and obviously he has, he's having a tremendous amount of success with Nebraska, and I'm not sorry that they lost, you know, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> but uh, when I was a part of the staff here early in my career, you know, it wasn't just that I was coaching Chris Brown and Bobby Fur Purifies and the Brandon Drums or the, the, the Cortland Johnsons of the world. Mm -hmm. I was heavily involved in the game plan. I was heavily involved in, you know, uh, the run game and also making sure that all the protections match that uh, 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 the blitzes that that uh, that they were running. And so, took that another step. Go to uh, UCLA. Work with Carl Durrell, who's a tremendous, brilliant, offensive-minded coach. He hires a Tom Cable. Tom Cable comes in. We implement a run game and a pass game, and I was very much involved in that. Mm -hmm. So I helped coordinate the run game as well, and as well as help input with the, uh, the pass game. And then moving on into the NFL, whereas, yes, I am a running back coach, but on top of that, I help input with the run game. I also help input with the pass game. And on top of that, I oversee all the protections when it comes down to picking up blitzes. So you ask... Do I have coordinating experience? No, I don't have the title, mm -hmm. but I've helped organize the staff and put together a game plan, you know, and I think that's 
what people are missing is the offensive coordinator job is to make sure collectively as a staff that we are organized, we are all having our input and making sure that we're properly giving our kids the best game plan, okay, to go out and execute on game day. I just finished my seventh season here calling games for Colorado. I, I saw what it was like under Barnett. I, I've, I've sat one on one with Bill McCartney and talked with him, with you, with other former players, with CJ about what this place means, what it is, and why it's kind of unique. I know it, it's not a prerequisite to be successful here that you have to have history here. Mm -hmm. But with you and Coach Embry, with Brian Cabral and the others that come in, how much of a benefit is it that you guys understand what Boulder and CU is all about? I think that's very important because what better people to identify with? Because we're going to understand the struggles that you're going to have as a student athlete. Mm -hmm. We're going to know what it's like if you're a kid from California and that first snow comes in and you don't know what to do with yourself. <laughs> you know, the, the tendency is I'm, I, I'm not going to class today. We're going to know how to address that issue. But I, I think it helps a great deal because we've walked up and down that hill, you know, off the practice field up to our uh, Dell Ward facility a number of years. And what better p people to identify with these young student athletes? I, I just think the, the university did the right thing. and. I'm excited. I'm proud of the fact that uh, Mike Bone, uh, Phil DiStefano, and Benson, they decided to go this route because, first of all, it shows that, yes, there are some people in our Colorado family who are qualified to do this. But, uh, but what's more importantly is we've been there. It's important to us that we get it done, you know, and, and there's going to be some passion and some energy involved in that as well. Lastly here, uh, Eric, before we let you go, uh, you and John coming back together. That process, uh, you had aspirations of being the head coach. He had aspirations of being the head coach. You come back as a package deal. How tough was that to overcome, or was it for whatever is best for the program here at CU? And your, your latter part question, uh, your answer, it's what's best for the program. Because you have to understand, the toughest part about this process was comp competing against Embo. That was hard. And you have to understand, me and Embo, we've been – great friends for a long time mm -hmm. not just when we well, we work together but Embo has been a mentor of mine he's helped me through a lot of different things and what better person to be named head coach and if I was going to lose I would prefer to lose <laughs> to him than somebody outside the family and the thing is is I'm proud of the fact that Embo wants me to be a part of this and that makes me feel great it, it's it rejuvenized my energy and just to come back and you know, just to start setting our plan forth and, and start heading in the right direction. Well, I can tell you this. Over the past few years, you can kind of feel Buff Nation was fractured a little bit. Everyone's coming back together. <laughs> Coach Bianami's back in the house as you'll see. Coach, congratulations. Look forward to working with Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. There he is, Eric Bianami.